All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to True Footy. Today I'm joined once again by Young Druzy. How are you, mate? Hey guys. Yeah, doing great, Jesse. Thank you very much for asking. That's good to hear. Today we are going to do one of our classic list of 10 players that nobody asked for. Today we're going to go through the 10 players in the league that are most unstoppable when they're on fire. It's an interesting concept, all right? Don't be hate. So the point of this video is not so much the 10 best players in the league, but the players that when they're on form, you're like, oh shit, I really hope he doesn't get the ball. There's certainly a few that stick out head and shoulders above the rest. And today we've had a crack at nominating which 10 players they are. Oh, we've had a crack, all right. Yeah. I actually haven't. Please, someone help me. I'm getting desperate. Please, guys, if anyone's at home. So, in no particular order, we're going to pick these 10 players. Druzy, why don't you start us off? You can't make a list when you're talking about players on fire without talking about the electrifying Dustin Martin. He isn't like a ball magnet necessarily, but his disposal effectiveness, is that the term? Yep. Effective disposal use. I mean, you see him get the ball and everyone knows where the ball is. It's in Dusty's hands. He's won three Norm Smiths. Big game player, and yeah, that grand final performance in 2020 was absolutely unparalleled. Something I'll always remember. One of the most dangerous players when he's on fire. Three Norm Smith speaks to the fact that he's probably one of the greatest big game players we've ever seen as well. And yeah, well, pretty much all of the goals he kicked in that grand final, it's like he couldn't defend that. They, yeah. just, he just conjured that from betwixt his erect earlier. The second player I'm going to nominate is kind of in a similar vein in that he's an exciting, explosive half-forward primarily, but also runs through the midfield. I'm going with Collingwood's Jordan Dugowie. In 2018, he sort of really burst onto the scene after going pick five a couple of years before, and he kicked 48 goals in a side that made it all the way to the grand final. He almost single-handedly won the Pies that grand final. He didn't actually have a lot of the ball, but the three goals he kicked were, like we just said with Dusty, completely undefendable. It's one of those rare performances where he played one of the best on ground, and the guy who played on him, Will Schofield, also had an outstanding game. His career is littered with examples like that, and when he's on fire, Collingwood generally win the game. I just think he's literally, like, when you see Dugowie at the MCG, it's just like, it's his realm, you know mm. what I mean? Like, no one lights up the MCG in the current competition than Jordan Dugowie, I don't think. So we've gone with another small forward, player who I've actually controversially picked to win the Coleman this year. I've gone with Charlie Cameron. So when he was drafted to the Crows, he was under Eddie, Eddie Betts, and you can see the similarities there. Two indigenous electrifying players that can kick goals just about from anywhere. But he's your modern day small forward. He runs up the ground. He can take the play on. He's dangerous around the contest. He can take a lead, take a big mark. He's your bloody modern day player that you want on your side. One of the best forwards in the competition. Um, and with Brisbane pushing towards a premiership, you know, He's going to have bigger games to play, and he will step up to the plate because he always does. We've seen him kick big bags before. He kicked 57 in 2019. Um, so, yeah, when he's on fire, you can't stop him. Big defenders can't bloody stay up to speed with him. Small defenders can't parallel him in the air. So, you know, he's a defender's nightmare. Next up, I'm going to go with uh, my own bias call for this video. I'm going to say Nick Natnui is one of these players that is unstoppable when in top form. Now, before 2020, he always had the caveat of being athletic, but maybe didn't have the same fitness level to start and maybe, you know, deep understanding of football to be a consistent player. But in 2020, he became more or less the player we always thought he could. And he was consistent all throughout the year. He was arguably a case for MVP across the whole league. Obviously, you had Neil and Hawkins probably shaded him, but he was undoubtedly the best ruckman of the competition in 2020. If he puts that form together again in 2021, I think the Eagles are a contender. His value in the clearances is top notch. His physicality is something the Eagles lack. And when he's on fire, the Eagles generally dominate that period, even if it doesn't go for the whole game. One of those players that when they get the ball, the stadium sort of stands on their feet and like mm. gets lit up. You know, I remember that game against Carlton at Subi where he tapped it down to himself and just <laughs> like the point of the century or whatever it was yeah. called. Very exciting player to watch and a very unique player as well. Sticking with personal biases, I've gone with Nathan Fyfe. So, you know, when you're playing for Frio, you don't probably get the recognition you deserve, but I think he is easily the best player in the competition. Two Brownlows, when you're in a side where you have to do most of the work, I mean, he, he's bloody unreal. Um, best player I've ever seen play for Frio, I think. I didn't get to see Pavs Prime, but yeah, you know, when that fights in a contest, he's going to hit it hard, and he most times takes the grab, goes forward, kicks goals. You can't stop him one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and yeah, obviously that 2015 Brownlow year, no one could stop him. Um, he was on fire, and there were no fire extinguishers anywhere, mate. So yeah, Nat Fife, one of the most electric players in the comp when he's on. 
True, he's an absolute clearance bull in the guts. He probably spends less time there than you would ideally want because I think they're trying to preserve his career a little bit. Maybe mm. if he spends a bit more time forward, he can probably play to 32, 33, 34, 35. And you're right about the recognition thing. In 2019, not many people were actually talking up as a chance to win the Brownlow and he won it fairly easily in the end. So, yeah. Next up, I'm going to nominate a former pick two in Christian Petrarca from the 2014 draft. He's a player sort of like Cam Rayner in that he burst onto the scene and we thought this guy was going to take the comp by storm. Like Rayner, it didn't happen for him straight away. I think he did his knee fairly early on, uh, to be fair to him. But he definitely had his doubters. And he's absolutely smashed all of those doubts out of the park with the back end of 2019 and also his 2020 season. He was actually joint third in the Brownlow last year, such as how far he's developed. On top of developing that consistency, we know he's explosive. He's strong. He's really good in the air. Really strong mark. So he can go forward as well. A little bit erratic sometimes. He's, he ranks pretty high for turnovers. But he's such an aggressive player that he more than makes up for it. Other than that, five, he's my favorite player in the league to watch when he's on fire you can't stop him he's so explosive out of the pack he just makes the other players look like children pretty much when he's when he's got his head down runs out of the pack and he fucking goes <laughs> explodes and yeah he just turns the game on its head when he wants to again another premier player in the afl i've gone with patrick dangerfield one time brownlow medalist two time brownlow medalist runner up and zero time premiership player i'm sorry fatty i had to do it to you <laughs> But no, that's the only accolade that's really missing from his career because everyone knows how skillful this bloke is from Adelaide. You saw glimpses of it when he was younger and he's lived up to that potential that everyone put on him. Won the grand final sprint. You know, he doesn't look the most athletic and quick, but, but he is. He, he moves that big chubby body. <laughs> what the fuck? He goes forward, rests forward like lots of the uh, big midfielders do these days. But, you know, his trademark is getting the ball in the middle, getting a clearance or just running through and kicking a goal from 50. And he does it time and time again. I'm going to nominate another Melbourne player who, funnily enough, have two players in this list, which is pretty good going. I'm going to say Max Gorn. And he's on this list because he's unstoppable for a kind of a different reason. A lot of these players we're mentioning are explosive or really exciting athletically. Gorn maybe doesn't have that sort of benefit, but at 208 centimetres, he's an absolute monster. So uh, I know he fell away a bit in the last couple of years when 2020 he actually had a very very good season uh, but when he's on top and playing well he's very very hard to control and he'd be one of the first players on the list for opposition boards where they're thinking to stop Melbourne we need to stop Gorn's dominance he's obviously great in the ruck but also he's when he goes back he sort of sits a kick behind the play marks the ball uh, as an interceptor really well as well um, and yeah when he's playing well Melbourne is usually doing well as well I'm going to finish off my players with another ruckman one and two Gorn and this bloke it's Brody Grundy another Collingwood player similar to Gorn he isn't just effective just in the rut contest he can play around the ground and he can impact the game with his ball use you can see his level compared to other Ruckmans he, he dominates certain Ruckmans especially the younger ones um, when they <laughs> come and yeah he's another one of those players that when he gets the ball he's very effective with it kicked a game winning goal in his career as well which is very exciting and yeah he's just a very exciting player when, he, when he's around the contest we've definitely seen him give many uh, inexperienced Ruckman a bath and frankly I've never seen Tim English so clean the final player on this list is a player we can't complete the list without including we're talking about Buddy Franklin and I know mm. he's right at the end of his career so I did actually think is it worth putting him in but uh, you know he's been so injury trouble over the last few years that we haven't really seen him at his best he probably still is capable of being the player that he once was in terms of being exciting or turning a game on its head there's probably not been a player like him maybe you could say Dusty's the other player around that level but in terms of what Buddy can produce um, I mean we've seen him kick 100 goal season the only player to do that since uh, Tony Lockett in 1998 in the home and away season stats we've also seen him kick 13 goals in a game which if I'm not mistaken is also probably the most in a game since the 90s at least since I've been watching football since about 02 then we've also seen the highlights package of that infamous uh, goal of the year he kicked when he ran up the wing against Essendon and he's a key forward the key forwards aren't meant to do that this, kid, yeah. this guy is absolutely ridiculous i was listening to a dylan friends podcast i think it was the um the hawthorne strength and conditioning coach and he said yeah buddy franklin is the most athletic player that he's ever seen across mm. all of his years yeah um, training athletes and yeah that's a bloody big accolade when you're a strength and conditioning coach yeah true there's uh, it's pretty hard to argue with that it's not hard to justify buddy franklin's selection other than the fact that he's uh at the twilight of his career we may not we, we're not actually guaranteed to see buddy franklin play football again um i think it's, that's sort of sad <laughs> yeah, it is. It is sort of like Gary Ablett leaving the game last year. Buddy Franklin, when he leaves the game, is, it is pretty momentous as well. The best player throughout the last 10 years, pretty much, when he's been playing. How many All-Australians has he made? Like, lots. Countless. I didn't include that in my notes, <laughs> <laughs> But no, he's for a long time, he was clearly the best in the comp. And when he went to Sydney, it was breaking news. Everyone knew what was happening. Um, mm. Didn't get the flag at Sydney, unfortunately for Buddy. But, you know... 
couple more years. Let's hope we can see some more magic from him because he, he has it in his locker. Well, that is it, guys. That concludes our list of 10 unstoppable AFL players when they're on fire. Thank you for joining in, Jersey. Thanks. Do you have any videos you'd like to promote now? I should have a uh, AFL big calls and every AFL team's player to break out in 2021. So if you want to watch some more of me and Jesse, I don't know why you would, but um, those will be up on my channel when this goes up. Definitely go check that out as well. And of course, on the True Footy channel, if you haven't seen it, I've done two videos recently I was pretty proud of. 2020 AFL season in 15 minutes and uh, also the 10 classic matches of 2020. Some historical content as well that, uh, that I hope you'll enjoy. So. Yeah, that tale of 2020, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's Jesse's best stuff yet. So ah, Thanks, buddy. Yeah, all right. I'm proud of you. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.